Welcome to the Brand Doctor Podcast, strategies that help entrepreneurs build reputable and profitable brands. Here's your host, Henry Kaminsky Jr. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Henry Kaminsky here from UniqueDesigns.net with another Brand Doctor Podcast episode for you guys. And today we are on day number four with keys to growing a strong, reputable, and profitable brand. And today's daily gem is called the Velvet Rope. So I want to add a little bit more clarity to this conversation. And I want to get a little conceptual here because normally I give practical, highly actionable things for you guys to do. But I noticed that many people are are willing to take action, but it's like it's like rowing a boat kind of randomly, and it's like having a rowboat with a single oar. You know, picture this for a second, right? You're going around in a circle until you get that second oar. So this week, I'm trying to build that second oar for you so that you can actually get ahead. And so we looked at three concepts thus far this week, and we discovered that at the heart of a real brand is the community that uses its products. So brand building is community. Now the question is, what comes first, the crowd or the popularity? So today's daily gem is called the velvet rope. And we all, let's be honest here, we all want things we can't have. This is what makes life exciting, the chase, right? Playing hard to get is fun, But if you're the one who's always trying to get, quote unquote, I can see where you can become extremely frustrated and have it be extremely annoying at the same time. So, you know, you ever see those girls or gals on Facebook who are constantly pitching in every single video that they put out? Now, listen, I'm all about being aggressive here, but there's a time and a place for it all. So let's get into today's Daily Gem and dive in a little bit deeper. So yesterday we talked about how scarcity and exclusivity creates desire. You know, everybody wants to be part of the cool club, the, the cool kids club, right? No one wants to feel left out. And so here's where most brands go wrong. They put the cart before the horse. So they're so focused on pitching and becoming popular in that next internet celeb status, right? They forget about what's really important. Without customers, you don't have a brand. Without attention, you don't have a brand. Now, once you have a community, what do you do with it? How does your brand interact with it? So here's where the velvet ropes come in. But first, let me ask you a question. What do you think comes first, the popularity or the crowd? So let me give you a quick example here. Back in 1979, McDonald's came out with the chicken McNugget. Now, I don't know about you guys, but these little things are my kryptonite. I swear, if they could come out with a 100-piece nugget... I'd be able to whack that thing out in 10 minutes easy. (laughs) But anyway, I digress. So here's what happened. So McDonald's couldn't keep up with the demand of the Chicken McNugget. So they had to divert the attention somehow, some way. And guess what was created out of it? The McRib. Now, this is another doozy of a sandwich. But man, when I tell you, the McRib was a game changer for McDonald's. And here's the interesting part. So a decade later, they come up with this really clever strategy. And here's the deal. They didn't uh, add any marketing budget to it. They never messed with the price. They never messed with the ingredients. The only thing that they did 
with the McRib was make this little sucker of a sandwich scarce. And man, was it a huge hit. I swear, Facebook groups were created. Some dude created a McRib locator so fans of the sandwich can actually go online and find the nearest McDonald's that was serving the McRib, which I thought that was insane. So like, seriously, the craze over the McRib was a game changer in branding. So making people feel like insiders and giving them a taste of what's behind the velvet ropes is what drives people to brands. The simple fact that something isn't readily available can make people go nuts and drive the value through the roof. But none of this could happen if there wasn't a crowd surrounding the brand first. So here's another example. One of my old club clients just opened up one of his clubs, right? And well, his first club, right? And he had a beautiful spot. It held 300 people. I mean, inside was absolutely gorgeous. And outside, he had a parking lot for like 100 cars. Now, most popular restaurants, they have a parking lot for about 30 cars. So 100 cars is a massive parking lot. So he opens up, he had a couple great nights, and then things started to like peter off a little bit. So this massive parking lot always looked empty. So he called me up one day and he asked me, what was, what am I doing wrong, Henry? And, you know, first of all, the guy was an amazing host. He had amazing service. Everything was top notch. The place looked gorgeous. So I went over there and I had a, had a chat with him and took a look at things. And the problem that I saw was very, very simple. The parking lot looked too empty. He said, I know, not enough people coming in, right? I said, no, John. There's plenty of people. You're making money. The problem isn't the people. Your parking lot looks too empty. Now, let me ask you a question. How many, day, how many times back in the day when you went out to the club or to the bar, wherever you went where everybody was hanging out, right? And you did a drive-by and you saw a lack of of cars in the parking lot, right? You were like, ah, eh, this place is dead. On to the next place. Nobody wants to go to a club or bar or any sort of establishment with an empty parking lot. It doesn't look popular. So, and, and the, the, the crazy thing was, is the place was packed inside, but this particular club, because of their parking lot being so big, it looked always empty. So he asked me, what should I do, Henry? I said, it's pretty simple. I said, fence off the back lot, label it overflow, make everyone park in the front and the side, and cut off those 50 spots until you need them. So a couple weeks later, the club's packed, lying around the building behind the velvet ropes, and his business doubled in two weeks. The simple fact that the club appeared more crowded made it more popular. So soon he had the regulars coming in, which created his base audience. So what comes first, the community or the crowd? Now listen, <clears throat> it's a trick question, but I want you to th be thinking about this. The real question is this, would you rather build buzz or community? What do you think has a longer lifespan, buzz or community? It's time to wake up, guys, and smell the coffee and stop doing things bass backwards. So there you have it, guys. Another episode in the books. Hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you got value out of it. Please share this with a friend or colleague if you think it can help them. And I'm always open to your feedback. Drop a review. Find me on social. Leave a comment. Leave a you know, just hit me up. Let me know what you think. Let me know that you're listening. Let me know that you're there. So have an awesome day, guys. And I will catch you on the next episode. Talk soon. You've been listening to the Brand Doctor Podcast with Henry Kaminsky Jr. To get your appointment with the doctor, visit Brand Audit at www.uniquedesigns.net.